So in this video, we are going to go over multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So without the common factors of the numerator and denominators, we're going to multiply the numerators, then multiply the denominators, and we're going to be sure the numerator and denominator have no common factor other than one. Okay, these are some of our steps. So um, what I typically do is I take like number one, I'm going to take all of my coefficients. Notice all of these are coefficients. So I'm going to do 3 times 10 over 2 times 9. So that's going to be 30 over 18, right? So we can reduce that there. Or we can also see on the left that some things reduced already, right? So um, look here. So 3 goes into 9 three times, right? and 2 goes into 10, whether we multiply it all out or whether we simplify it before we get there. Okay, so there's two ways to do this, and you can choose which one you want to do. Now we're going to deal with our other terms, okay? So we're going to deal with all of our x's, okay? So we're going to deal with every x. So we got an x to the fifth on top, and we're going to add this 3 that's on top. And remember, anything that's on the bottom, we're going to subtract it. So then we're going to, so we got that 3 there and that 5 there. Then we got a 3 down here, which means we're going to subtract that 3. And then we got a 2 down here, so that means we're going to subtract that 2. So that's 5 plus 3, which is 8, minus 3, which is 5, minus 2, which is 2 to the third, right? So that would be 8 minus 5, which would be x to the... Y'all see this right here? This is 8, right? This is minus 5, so that's going to be x to the third. Okay, now let's deal with our y's, okay? So same thing with our y's. We got a y to the third on top plus our 4. Then we're going to subtract this 7 here because it's in the denominator. We're going to subtract this 5. Okay. So now we got 7 minus 12, right? So that's going to be y to the negative 5. Now remember, if it's negative, it's going to go back to the denominator. Okay. So now we're going to put all this together. So we get 5 x to the third, that goes on top, right? Then over 3, and this y to the negative 5 goes to the denominator because it's negative, okay? And this says assume all expressions are defined so we don't have to worry about the x equals 0, right? Okay, so that's what this simplifies to be when we're multiplying, okay? So now the one on the right is a little different, and the reason it is different is because um, we are going to factor some things in the top and the bottom, and then we're going to multiply. Okay, so when we do this, we're, we're going to actually do the x minus 3 on top. And remember, we multiply across top and across the bottom. So we got our x plus 5 here. Now we're going to factor the things that are on the bottom, okay? So notice that there's a 4 that's a factor of both of those. So that's going to be 4 x plus 5, right? And then what about this right here? We did this one yesterday, x squared minus 9. So isn't this going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3? Okay, so now all we have to do is, is mark through the things that are in the numerator and the denominator, okay? So this x minus 3 is down here, right? This x plus 5 is down here. So we're left with nothing on top, which means there's really a 1 up there. This is going to be 1 over 4 times x plus 3. Now, sometimes your answers will be multiplied out, y'all. So sometimes your answers will be 1 over 4x plus 12, okay? So either one of those is correct, okay? Because they are the same thing. All right, on the next one, um, I would like you guys to try this next one, okay? So go ahead and do this and come back to me when you're done, okay? So again, I've got um, our coefficients here. Y'all see this 20 and 15, 20 over 15 um, times 2. And we had a 2 right there as well. Y'all see that? So again, we could go ahead and start by simplifying this right here, right? So that's going to be 10. 2 goes into 20 10 times. So that's going to be 10 over 15, but that can reduce more, right? Because 5 goes into both of those. So that's going to be 2 thirds. Okay, now we're going to talk about our x's, okay? So we've got an x to the first, right? That's on top. If it's on top, it's positive. Then we got plus 7, and then on the denominator, we've got a minus 1, right? Because this one right here is a minus 1. 
and then we got a minus 4 because just remember if it's in the denominator it's negative okay so this is going to be 8 minus 5 which is going to be x to the third okay right because <clears throat> 1 plus 7 is 8 and 1 plus 1 negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 so here again we're going to have our 2x to the third over 3 that's going to be our simplest answer okay all right, let's see if you guys can do number four. Come back to me when you're done. So here, I'm going to go ahead and factor this. We got a 10, right? And that's going to be x minus 4, because 10 is a factor of both 10 and 40. And then we've got our x plus 3. Then here, what are the factors of 8 that add up to be negative 6? I'm pretty sure that would be minus 4 and minus 2. So this is going to be x minus 4 and x minus 2. And then what about this one over here? Yep, hopefully you see it's a 5 is, is the GCF, right? Times what? x plus 3. Okay, so now we're just looking for common factors in the numerator and the denominator, okay? So we've got, now notice this 10 right here. 10 and 5 are factors of each other, right? So this reduces to be a 2. Then we've got our 4, negative x minus 4 and x minus 4, and our x plus 3 and our x plus 3, right? So what are we left with? 2 over x minus 2. And that's our answer. This was our answer over here, by the way. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about are complex fractions, okay? And... Um, a complex fraction contains one or more fractions in its numerator, its denominator, or both. So basically, that would be like two-thirds over one-half, right? Now, if you guys recall that um, it says, remember, a fraction bar is the same as a division. So a complex fraction is really just a complicated way of writing a division problem. So isn't this really just two-thirds divided by one half. Now hopefully you guys remember um, that when we are dividing fractions, we do this process called keep, change, flip, okay? So what that means is if we are going to do this, we're going to keep our first term, okay? So under here, we're going to write keep first term, okay? We're going to change our sign and then we're going to flip the second term, okay? So I'm going to write second term here. So that's what we're doing, okay? So we're going to keep our first term. So up here we would do 2 over 3, right? And then it says change the sign to multiplication. And then we're going to flip the second term. So it's going to be 2 over 1 now, right? So now we're just going to multiply across the top, which is 4 over 3, okay? So one half divided, I mean, two thirds divided by one half is the same as two thirds times two over one, okay? Because we're going to keep the first term, change the sign to multiplication, then flip the second term, okay? So we're going to do a couple of these together, okay? So on this first one, we've got 5x to the fourth and 8x squared y squared. So we're going to change this to a multiplication sign and then we're going to flip it. 8y to the third and then 15. Okay. So we're going to deal with our coefficients again. We've got our 5 times 8, right? Let me clean that up a little bit so it looks like a 5. And then notice here we've got an 8 times 15. Again, we can simplify, can't we? These 8s cancel each other out and if we got a 5 here, 5 goes into 15 how many times? 3. So this would be 1 third. Do you all see that? Okay, now let's talk about our x's and our y's, okay? So now we've got our um, x Now we're going to deal with our x's, right? So we've got an x here and we've got an x here, okay? So that's going to be x to the 4 minus 2, which is going to be x squared, right? And then we got our y's here, right? So this is going to be y to the 3rd minus 2, which is equal to just y to the 1st, right? So now we got our 1 and 3, so we're going to say 1x squared y over 3, right? 
So notice we don't typically have to put that one there, so we can go ahead and just make it this, x squared y over 3. That is our answer, okay? So now, again, this 6. Now, this is what we call a complex fraction, y'all. Okay, so again, remember, it's just division. So I'm going to rewrite it just so you guys can see it. b plus 3 over b squared plus 6b plus 9. And that's divided by what? b plus 2 over b squared minus 9. Now, we're going to keep change flip, right? So we're going to keep our first term, which is b plus 3 and b squared plus 6b plus 9. But we're going to change our sign, our multiplication, to, to multiplication, right? We're going to flip this, okay? So this is now going to be b squared minus 9 over b plus 2. So now what I want to do is go ahead and simplify this, okay? Simplify anything I can. So on our next step, I'm going to do b plus 3. And then on top, I got that times what? What is this next thing? Isn't that b plus 3 and b minus 3, y'all? That's the factors of b squared minus 9, right? And then we're going to factor this. So what are the factors of 9 that add up to b6? Wouldn't that be 3 and 3? So this is going to be b plus 3 and b plus 3. And then we still got this b plus 2 over here, right? So this was this, y'all, okay? All right, so now we're going to mark through anything that's repeated, okay? So I got b plus 3, b plus 3, b plus 3, b plus 3. So what's left over there? b minus 3 over b plus 2. And that is as simple as it gets, guys. We can't make it any simpler than that, okay? That's as good as it gets. All right, now let's do a couple more. So this is going to be, the next one's going to be another complex fraction, okay? So here again, I'm going to write this, rewrite this problem first. So I've got an x plus 1 x squared minus 1, and that's divided by x over x minus 1. So we're going to keep change flip, okay, guys? So we're going to keep our first one, and I'm going to go ahead and factor this because this is going to be x. Whoa. Um, actually, I'm just going to leave it like it is for right now, then we'll talk about it. Change the sign to multiplication, and then we got our x minus 1 up here and our x because we changed the second term. Keep the first term change it to multiplication and flip the second term, okay? So now we're going to factor what's in this denominator right here, right? So this is going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. Hopefully you remember that. Both of those are perfect squares. And we're going to multiply that. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this all over one line here, y'all, okay? Because we're going to see what we got because we're just multiplying, right? So I'm going to put this in parentheses. I got an x minus 1 up here. And I got another x right there, right? Okay, so what do we see that we can cancel out? We got a plus 1 and a plus 1. We got a minus 1 and a minus 1, right? So what's left on top is just a 1, right, over x. Okay, so that one's as simple as it goes. Now, here we go again. Now, this one's a little complicated, y'all. So we're going to talk about it a little more. So I got 1 over x plus 1 over 2x. Again, we're going to keep the top term, we're going to change it to multiplication, and now we're going to change, we're going to flip it, right? So it's going to be x minus 2 over x plus 4. So we kept the top, we changed it to multiplication, and we flipped the bottom. Okay, so now with this one, we're going to have to multiply this x minus 2 over x plus 4 times both terms. So we're going to multiply 1 over x times x minus 2 over x plus 4. And then we're also going to multiply that times the 1 over 2x, right? x minus 2 over x plus 4. We have to distribute that, x minus 2 over x plus 4. So on the top, we're going to get here x minus 2 over x squared plus 4x, right? And then we're going to add to that our x minus 2. And now this is going to be 2x squared plus 8x, right? if we want to simplify it. Otherwise, we could just leave it as the multiplication, okay? 
So that was the answer to that one. And notice we don't have common denominators, so we cannot combine those. So number nine, so keep change flip, right? So we got our x squared minus 9x squared over x squared minus 4x plus 3. Change the sign to multiplication. Now we got an x squared minus 16 over x to the fourth plus 2x to the third minus 8x squared. Okay, now we gotta, we've got to simplify these, okay? So, wait, that was a fourth over there, y'all. I don't know how I wrote squared there, but let me fix that. It should have been a fourth right there. Okay, so now I notice that there's an x squared up here. So that's going to give me x squared minus 9, okay? And then over here, um, we're going to go ahead and factor this, y'all. So this is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4, right? Okay, then down here, what are the factors of 3, y'all? Add up to be negative 4, that would be negative 1 and negative 3, right? That's a negative, y'all. So that's going to be x minus 1, x minus 3. Then over here, I notice that we have an x squared that's a factor. So that's going to give us x squared plus 2x minus 8. So we have some more simplifying to do, right, y'all? So do you guys notice this right here? This can be simplified more, as can this. So let's do that. So now we got x squared, and then we've got an x plus 3, and an x minus 3, okay? And on this other side, we got an x plus 4, and an x minus 4. Down here, we've got an x minus 1, and an x minus 3. Over here, we have an x squared, and then we can factor this, right? So what are the factors of negative 8, right there, that add up to be 2? So wouldn't that be 4 minus 2, y'all? So this is going to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. So once we've done this, we're just trying to see if we can cancel anything out, okay? So I notice an x squared and an x squared, so those cancel each other out. I don't have an x plus 3 in the bottom, but I do have an x minus 3. And I don't, I do have an x plus 4, um, but I don't have an x minus 4. Okay, so what do we have left, y'all? So what we have left is we have x plus 3. We have an x minus 4, right? And over here, we have an x minus 1 and an x minus 2. Now, as I said before, sometimes these answers, y'all, we'll we'll actually um, multiply that so if we did that that would be x squared and then we got minus 4x plus 3x so that would be minus x minus 12 that's our numerator and then on the bottom we'd have x squared and then we got negative 2x minus 1x so that's minus 3x plus 2 okay so the answer could be written either one of these ways all right so we got one more so this one over here, okay, so remember, keep change flip, right? Keep this term, we're going to change the sign to multiplication, and we're going to put our 12y squared on top, and our x to the fourth y squared, sorry, y, not y squared, just y on the bottom. So now we can do some simplifying, right? So you guys notice this 4 and this 12. So 12 divided by 4 is, yes, 3. Then we have our x squared minus 4. That gives us x to the negative 2. And then we've got a y squared minus 1, right, equals y. So now when we put all these together, remember, if it's negative, it goes to the denominator, okay? So um, we've got a 3 on top, right? And then we've got a y, that's positive, so it goes on top. And then we have an x squared that goes to the denominator. And it goes to the denominator because it's negative. Okay?